Hi, um, this is just a bit of experimentation. Somebody asked me um, about uh, actually creating um, a curtain wall system. They were trying to use traditional curtain walls in, in Revit um, 2011. Um, and I came up with this kind of alternative approach to using uh, the massing tools and actually a generic model as the curtain wall panel. It's kind of a bit of a weird one. I'm not quite sure whether you utilize it uh, in true BIM terms. It's kind of you're really hacking it but um, it, you might find it useful so um, let's just start off um, with a model line and we're just going to create something that represents um, a curtain wall system so just to extrude this up and we're just going to subdivide this um, and I'm actually going to put it in by specific numbers so what we'll do is we'll make it two meters um, by two meters Actually, I'll tell you what, now, for it, for, to speed it up, let's make it four meters by four meters. Uh, right, um, so what we're going to start off with, uh, we're doing a new uh, family, and we're going to actually choose a curtain wall pattern-based family. Okay, let's get that going. Okay, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do an aligned dimension between the two adaptive points that form the um, the curtain wall uh, pattern um, and what I'm going to do is select that one and we'll make that a label add that a parameter uh, I'm just going to call it um, let's just call it X for the time being and make it instance and you can kind of use it as a reporting parameter if you want to and we'll do the same one here and we'll add a parameter and we'll make that XX instance and a reporting parameter Okay, so normally what you would do is you probably build your geometry um, in your curtain wall panel here and then you load it in, So, which is absolutely fine, but sometimes with more complex geometry it can be a bit painful to do it in here. I've, I've sort of been experimenting with stuff and it can be a bit of a nuisance. So I'm not quite sure how this is going to go, but let's let's just carry on. So we'll go to new and we'll do a new family. And we're going to actually choose um, a metric generic model. It's again, a, you know, a purist people are going to go, ouch, I don't like this. But you might find it useful, as I said, if you're doing conceptual design work. Uh, we'll open this. And all I'm going to do is put a couple of reference planes in. Okay. And we'll dimension these. And we'll equalize it. And we'll dimension these. And equalize that. Put another dimension here, another dimension there. Um, and then we're going to label this one and we'll add a parameter and we'll make it reporting. Oh, sorry, we'll make it instance rather. Uh, we'll make that X and likewise we'll do the same there as well. We'll make that instance and we'll make that XX. Fine. Um, so if we went and uh, if you're really purist about it, you get a uh, up here, you get a family types and you start flexing away and we just say well actually that's three meters and three meters pronto it flexes great so we we'll just go back change that back to one meter just to make it a bit smaller on the screen which is good uh, and now we're going to start to add some geometry around these reference planes so we'll choose um, a sweep and first of all we're going to sketch our path and we're going to snap to our reference planes and we're going to lock the sketch line to the reference planes and we'll finish the edit mode we'll go in here and we'll edit a profile so let's go to a 3D view and let's just actually try and find it uh, I don't know quite know what I'm going to do but this is going to be the profile for the curtain wall system uh, let's just say it's going to go up here uh, and we'll make it kind of super complex just to see what you know we can actually do. And I guess you could actually add curves and all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And again, you could parameterize this if you wanted to. Uh, let's just finish the sketch mode. And there we are. We have our basis of our very simple looking curtain wall. Save that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to load this um, into our... Uh, uh, panel, uh, what pattern-based curtain wall panel? 
to get the name right really shouldn't I um, we'll okay that and of course it loads straight in there and we're just going to place it okay and now what we're going to do is tie what we want to do is try and tie the parameters here okay to this this panel system here okay and this uh, this is going to I kind of think this is going to fail first time around because I've noticed in a few occasions it sort of comes in the wrong way or orientation but we'll have a play and we'll see what we come up with okay so we'll se select our, um, our family generic model we'll scroll down and we're going to add some dimensions here so what we do is we'll go to here and we're going to basically assign the same parameters we've got here okay to this uh, nested component so what we do is choose XX or we'll lock that one to there well that was a bit of luck that works fine and then tying that one there to uh, X okay so it should work now what you're going to need to do now is basically lock this fella here in case of these planes so we'll go to a top view okay with the line tool we're going to use that um, actual reference line there and we're going to lock that geometry here and lock it and likewise here and lock it now actually that didn't go around first time around so let's just pick that here that's better we'll lock that there okay so the the acid test for us really is to pick the grid system and change the actual spacing of the grid system here okay so which is hey presto that kind of worked which is great okay so we've reduced it down to 15 by 1500 by 1500 but remember the system I drew on the original surface I think I made it four meters by four meters so kind of just let's just make that back to four meters by four meters and all we're going to do is load our curtain wall pattern based family straight into our divided surface so let's load that directly into here okay if we select the divided surface go to our properties palette and we'll choose the family that we loaded in and hey presto there we are so let's just make it hidden line so that kind of could be a useful way of doing a curtain wall system now one of the cool things here is because of the divided surface we can actually change the angle of the divided surface okay and you'll see here that our system will go with it and I kind of quite this is really what got me sort of really looking around this if we if we come to the point here that these um, that's the sort of a the point that um, defines the extent of the divided surface and actually if we pull it back yeah, what you'll do is it will find it will actually slice the curtain wall system back which kind of could be useful when you've got complex um, angled systems that you're trying to work with um, what you will find is that the the panel system here really needs to match the divided surface and if I sort of show you what I mean because you can get some really kind of slightly weird results so if I make this here by two meters okay and you start to get some weird repeating patterns which is interesting if you like that sort of thing I'm sure Zach would get very excited okay so of course it's because it's dividing the surface okay by two by two which is half of the four by four and obviously it works fine but if you just change some of those those um, figures here you do get some really weird patterns which is again might be useful okay so um, just thought of should pass a little tip on uh, might be useful might not be but it, again it sort of it shows how you can basically nest uh, components into the Kermal pattern-based family. Thank you.